but hopefully this will help someone better understand their front brake and get a better front brake setup to where everything feels better. So let me move this back to where I just had to redo it. So front brake, you are going to use two or three fingers. I can't really show you three fingers because of this, but you're going to use two or three fingers on the front brake. You don't need all four fingers on the front brake. The reason why a lot of people struggle, I believe, as a beginner, is they use all four fingers. What happens when you use all four fingers is instead of having the handlebar in this, or the throttle in a very nice, comfortable position where your elbow is kind of pointed down. So this is something that when you, if you ride any type of sport bike, this becomes especially important, but your elbows aren't out. They're down. Everything's just hanging. You're holding up yourself up by your core, by your legs, by your abs, by your back. There's no weight on your arms. There should never be weight on your arms. So, you know, I'm nice, comfy, loose. What happens when I have to reach for all four and what natural human tendency will do is you're gonna reach for all four, you're going to rotate your hand so that your pinky gets a nice good grip of that front brake and you have now rotated your shoulder, you're in a more stiff position, you're in a much less stable position and you are now, I'll bet you anything, pushing on the handlebar to the right, just a hair. That hair is enough to scare the hell out of you when you punch your front brake. Because you are now in a position, you are in the strongest position possible to grip something. The handlebar is not gonna be dead even. That's the reason why if you really go look at people's bikes, right side, I could show you on this one, right side is where people typically fall when they're brand new, is because they, are going to have this kind of barbell bench grip with the handlebar and then they're going to come in and they're going to punch it and you know as it goes if the handlebar is like this if you're sitting still and you push it there whoop, it's going to the right so don't do that you only need two or three fingers i promise you have the strength for it um, there's, and your front brake is not a strength exercise. This is not a grip strengthening, strengthening device. It takes very, very, very little pressure to use your front brake and to use it effectively and to use it how it was designed. It's not an on and off switch. That is the worst mistake and thought people have. And I, tr I really think it's because so many people, when they're using their front brake for the first time, and really anytime they panic, anything, they're not grabbing the front brake like this. They're not taking a nice, calm, forward grab. They're rotating everything to grab it with their pinky and simultaneously pushing the handlebars ever so slightly. And this is enough to disrupt everything. So if I'm standing up on the pegs right here, right? And I'm coming to, oh no, I gotta come to a stop. Right? My wrist doesn't move. Versus, uh oh, I'm going to rotate and then pull. Now I've disrupted my handlebar. I don't feel as stable. And I am using way too much pressure on this thing because I have my strongest three fingers pulling that front brake. Don't do it. Two or three fingers. That's all you need, I, I promise. I really promise there. Now, the setup of your front brake. This is where things are not discussed enough in my opinion. So, on this is my girlfriend's bike. Her hands are much smaller than me, but this would be a horrible setup for me. Reason being, closed throttle, my middle knuckle, so right through here, hopefully that's visible, right through here, is where that front brake is. That is no good. And the reason being is, if you can see my finger, look at how little my finger moves with that part of my hand. So I'm having to squeeze way harder, and I'm now having to bring, I'm basically closing my fist to get that to move enough to close. Where you want your lever is to be sitting right here, right in between these two fingers. Because look at how much more that finger moves, right? These up here move way more with the exact same amount of effort than these two knuckles right here. 
I mean, that's that's it. So you have more finesse. So with this lever right here, I put it out to a four, and now it fits perfectly. So if I'm rolled all the way forward with my hand, I'm off the throttle, it fits right in between knuckle, knuckle. Fits perfectly. Now I have way more control over this thing way more so notice I'm sitting here like this my wrist arm everything is loose so I'm not hurrah I'm not trying to you know bench press this thing I'm holding it nicely I have a ton of flex here everything's staying loose and I'm only using these two fingers and I'm pulling slowly and gradually even for emergency stops you are going to have to and this is this takes a lot of practice is you're not going to jump it you're going to learn to progressively pull and progressively pull hard and that is much easier said than done i don't think i've ever seen anyone just walk out and be able to progressively pull to max effort and not to max effort but to max braking power that's needed it, that is something that and this is something too that's that's an advanced skill this is where trail braking and everything comes along later. Understanding your limits there is what makes someone Rossi versus the guy who wrecks his front end going into a corner. But this is what you need to learn. Progressive pulling in. You're not jumpy with your front brake. Pull. And pull hard. Don't be afraid to put muscle behind it, but you have to be smooth with it. So, front brake. We got its nice distance. Now, the next factor here that needs to be taken into account, and this is extremely relevant when you get to a point to where you're learning to trail brake into corners and you really start trying to ride hard. Um is the actual lever position so this is something that is important for a beginner because it will get you used to this movement right here which i think is absolutely vital so and it's all you're doing is when you come off the throttle your front two fingers come up this is it it's a very easy and it is it will save your life and it will also make you a 10 times better rider than the guy who has to, has to, uh oh, and punch it. So, out, up, out, up, out, up. You get that down, you are doing better than probably 75% of people on the road in terms of their actual braking capability. Now, Getting the up and down is important for this because if it's too high, what happens is I have to reach up. If I'm having to reach up, my throttle is still engaged right here. So now I'm reaching up, my throttle's engaged, and I'm pulling and now having to go like this. So I'm now having to try and remain or finish closing the throttle while doing this. It's two moving parts when there should not be. What most bikes come factory as is the levers are just a hair too high. On this bike, the lever is a hair too high for me to be set up to where it's where I would want it. So, looking at this lever, it needs to be a little lower. And it's not bad. I mean, it's, it's very close. But, so, that way, if I'm driving around, driving around, coming off, the let the throttle is fully closed. Zero throttle to where I'm boom so if this was a hair lower right i'd be about right here and what you want that front brake to be lined up with as well is you want it lined up with how whatever your angle is where your throttle is closed that lever is going to be coming back directly towards your hand right so see how this one is kind of pulling it's kind of pulling in a direction to like this upward higher than it should be it should be pulling towards the middle of your hand because this is where you have to move your wrist the least to have the most power and the most control because it goes back to having that loose hand which is so important now i don't have the tools to show you all you have to do to adjust your lever height this is my girlfriend's bike she'd shoot me if i touched anything on it so 
not going to do that, but you take these two bolts right here, loosen them, and you're just going to rotate that, rotate it down. 99% of bikes from the factory, you're going to want to pull it, move her down just a hair. I don't know if I've ever sat on a bike that came factory with a lever, at least for my riding, the way I hold a throttle, that I wouldn't move it down just a hair. Um, and I've sat on a lot super sports especially where you have to move it so much you don't know how they you don't know why they even shipped it out of the factory the way they did uh it doesn't make sense but 